Welcome back to Wall Street Week. We're joined by your capital founder and CEO, Jamie Dynan. Jamie, let me ask you, how closely are you following the 2016 election? Do you think that has any impact on investing? Well, obviously, I'm following it because it's obviously been probably one of the more entertaining elections uh, in my lifetime. Maybe, in fact, might be the most entertaining election in my lifetime. And I think it's an important one. You know, I, I think I would have to say that I think Warren Buffett's probably right, you know, that if either Hillary Clinton or Donald Trump becomes president, that it's really not going to affect our economy and affect yeah, our so business. The system's in pretty good shape, regardless of who the leader is, is your point, right? I think the system's in pretty good shape. I mean, you this country's, you know, we're 200 plus years uh, around, and we've had we've had some bad leaders. We've had some, uh, you know, dysfunctional. I think governments. Like a government today is reasonably dysfunctional. System still somehow a lot of checks and balances. Our framers sort of got it right. I'm not particularly worried about you know that outcome. So how would you rate the health of the U.S. economy right now? So. I know we live in New York, and you know, obviously, uh, I would say the you know people view the economy depending on how the you know the Dow Jones trades you know week to week. But if you look at the numbers, U.S. economy is pretty healthy. I mean, it's uh, I mean, there's an old saying that you know facts you know are sometimes inconvenient, but you look at the job you know the job numbers, I mean, it's pretty good. We saw get some wage increases. You know, I think if you're the average person, things are getting better. And so, so you read the Fed minutes, the Fed. The Fed's thinking of raising. Right, but it's, I, I was going to go there. It's an interesting week that we've just had because right. the, the idea that the Fed may start to tighten again uh, next month in June has come back into play. Yeah. Uh, what did you think about the Fed raising rates in December, and do you think the Fed should continue on this path right now? <clears throat> okay, so I am personally a big believer that we're in a very low, no inflation environment for a very long time. I think the, the global economy suffers from a lack of aggregate demand. And, and actually has too much aggregate supply. And, they, and so these deflationary forces have been with us for five, six, seven years. And I think they're going to be with us for five, six, seven years. Anything we do to turn that around from a policy Gover perspective? Governments have to start spending. The, the private sector just isn't picking it up. Companies aren't investing. You know, they're complaining that corporates, all they do is buy back their stock. Well, corporates aren't buying back their stock because that's all they want to do. And, I mean, everybody says they're doing it so they can get their EPS up, so they can get their big bonuses. Okay, I'm sure that's a little bit. They just don't see the demand. They don't see the demand. So, so, in, that environment, just, so that, in that environment, just to close the loop on the Fed, so if the Fed moves for whatever reason they decide to move, you continue to believe, or it sounds like you continue to believe, that they are making a mistake given where interest rates are and what the economies look like outside of the United States. My own personal view, if I was a voting member of the FOMC, I would say you're better off waiting until you actually see the ghost of inflation materialize. Because right now there's still a ghost of deflation out there, mm -hmm. and that's a lot more scary. And you've got so, to get so it where right. are the greatest We can't have another 1937 38 mm -hmm. kind of basically relapse in this economic recovery that is taking place. So, where do you think the opportunities are then globally? Globally, you know, everything, I mean, everything's reasonably well priced. I mean, there's not a lot of bargains, you know, out there. I'm not saying we're in a bubble at all, like a lot of pundits would what say. What about the structured credit markets? Do you like those? Okay, in, st in structured credit, we at York don't do a lot of structured credit, okay? But from what I do know, I know a little bit about it, I think it's okay because one of the things about structured credit is all you need is the economy to be just okay, and most of these structures actually work. So if you look at the CLO, CDO, you know, market, commercial, or residential, or corporates, it, it's... It's okay. I mean, it's not going to withstand an uh, economic tsunami, but I don't see an economic tsunami out there. In fact, going back, Gary, to your Fed question, regardless if the Fed raises 25 basis points or not in June, I don't think it's going to derail the economy. I actually think the U.S. economy is stronger than a lot of people were willing to admit. And, and as a result, yes, normalizing interest rates is a good idea. I don't think normalizing rates to two, three percentage points makes sense in basically a non-inflationary world. 25, 50 base points, not going to be a problem. And this is really important. The Fed is not looking to raise rates just for the sake of raising rates, okay? Janet's Fed is very, very conscious of the deflation issues I'm talking about, what's going on in the world, currency issues. They're only raising if they have the data that clearly indicates the economy can easily withstand it. And you can really make a case that that's actually lots, bullish. Lots of really good points. Our, our thanks to your capitals, Jamie Dynan for joining us today on Wall Street.